So we're in the aftermath of the EA Sports FIFA World Cup tournament. It was, of course, won by the one and only Chris Forrester. Chris, how are you feeling? Yeah, I'm, I'm delighted, to be fair. Um, yeah, I'm delighted. Trophy's coming back to Chicago. Uh, see you next year, boys. You lost the final. Have you recovered yet? Uh, yeah, I think I bounced back quick enough, to be fair. It, it hurts at the time, uh, especially in a competitive game of FIFA. But look, uh, I'll be stronger for it. I'll come back in four years' time and hopefully pip him again. Kind of answered like a true footballer. You guys didn't even make the final. Yeah, I was robbed in the semi-final by, by Chris, to be fair. Uh, two shots, two goals. And uh, I don't think Lukey was too happy either. But. Tal put in the performance of the day, to be honest. Yeah, 67% possession. <laughs> Three one-on-ones. There was a serious against the run of play, he beat me. Um, we are, of course, at the start of the FIFA World Cup. It started in the last couple of days. Pico, what are your standout memories from an Irish point of view? We haven't been to as many of them as we would have liked, but we have been to a few. Yeah, definitely. I think, uh, obviously, the Robbie Kane and Damien Duff goals really stand out, and Damien Duff's celebration was uh, brilliant. I remember just practicing it the whole time in the yard with uh, people in the school. Like, so, uh, yeah, that definitely sticks out um, for me, and it was, just, it was a real feel-good uh, tournament. Uh, Luke, what are your memories of Ireland at the World Cup? And when I say memories, I, I guess for guys of your age, it's about maybe remembering the footage that you've seen, if that makes sense, because you, you probably weren't old enough to appreciate it. Yeah, I remember 02, like I would have been eight or nine in 02. Uh, I remember the TV getting wheeled into school for the Germany game. Robbie Keane scoring, it was just unbelievable. Uh, like the lad said earlier, I just remember the scenes in school. And then I remember um, watching the Spain game at home. And obviously Damien Duff was the best player on the pitch, probably he was world class at the time. So. They're, they're the big memories, really. Brian, as a goalkeeper, I presume uh, many of your fondest memories of World Cups involve Packy Bonner. Yeah, yeah, of course, because, uh, you know, even for the 2002 World Cup, I would have only been one, so uh, a lot of my World Cup memories, you know, it's, it's come from my family or from watching things, and, and even just, like, my family showing me, you know, photos of them supporting the World Cup when Ireland were there. But, yeah, do you know, like, things like the penalty save obviously was huge, and, you know, set up Ireland up to to win that game and you know, uh, yeah, I'd say Paggy Bonner would probably be, for me anyway, my like Ireland World Cup hero. Chris, how influenced were you by those scenes as a kid? Obviously, you remember 2002, no doubt you've seen the clips and all that from Italia 90 and 94. How much did that influence you as a footballer? Yeah, I think for, for any kind of aspiring footballer, um, especially seeing them images of, you know, Robbie Keane scoring them goals and stuff like that, uh, it's it's great inspiration for for someone that wants to grow up and you know that's that's the the pinnacle of what you can do for your country is scoring at a World Cup or you know advancing through the rounds in a World Cup. Uh, so for me, watching that was, you know, it's everyone kind of has a moment where they say this is what I want to do and you know looking at that sort of stuff is when you, it's, it's probably dawned on me that you know that's what I want to do in my life. I want to be a footballer on that stage. You know that would would have been one of my dreams growing up was to play for your country and play at such a big tournament like the World Cup and you know wherever it may be. Now after correctly predicting the last three winners in 2010, 2014 and 2018, EA has used EA Sports FIFA 23 with groundbreaking Hypermotion 2 technology and the dedicated FIFA World Cup 2022 ratings in FIFA World Cup kickoff and tournament modes to simulate all 64 matches and see who will come out on top come the final. Now keep in mind they have been right on the last three occasions, they have suggested this time around that it will be Argentina. Is that who you're backing? Not me, no, no. I fancy Brazil, uh, shock, I probably said them every second word I could. Uh, yeah, no, Brazil for me, I think, look, Argentina, it's a great story with Messi, I'd love to do it in his final tournament, but I was looking at that team and although Saudi Arabia played great, I say, I, I don't think there's there's much other else there. There's probably a handful of good players, but I think as the overall 11, there's much stronger in the World Cup. My heart wants to just say Argentina for Messi. Um, just to go against me, isn't it, really? No, yeah. it's not, it's not. <laughs> I, love, I love Messi so much, so um, you know, I'm just going to go with my heart and say Argentina will win it. I'd be the same as, as Chris. Yeah, I'm in Brazil. Um, having from the start, I think it's Neymar's tournament. He's having the best season of his life, I'd say. Okay. Thank you very much for joining us to talk about the FIFA World Cup and congratulations to Chris, our winner. He will dine out on that 
for a long, long time. It's time to play your way and experience football's greatest stage on FIFA 23. Until December 18th, you can play FIFA World Cup Live, a curated World Cup experience with all the authentic trimmings that's available only on FIFA 23.